Here we're at the Banging Head Festival 2015 and to me, I'm just talking with the headliner of this festival today. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that <laughs> because, hey, you, it was a fucking amazing show. Thank Did you, you enjoy yourself? I had a r really good time. It's, um, you know, it's our third time here, but I think we've kind of, like, it's like a family here now. So yeah. when we come, we see all these people we haven't seen in a while. and. Um, we see people's kids growing up right yeah. before us, so it's really become more of a family affair coming to Bang Your Head because you just keep seeing friends, you know? And there's a lot of fans and new people, but there's a lot of people that have been coming for the 20 years. And this is the 20th anniversary, that's amazing. So, yeah, it was really fun, and I, I wasn't expecting that many people to be up, but they got up, came out, it's nice. So, yeah, it was awesome, really awesome. Am I allowed to cuss? Am I allowed to use cuss words? You could say fuck, or you could fuck, say, uh, shit, cock, bullshit, balls. Uh, it was. I can tell you this. It was fucking a great experience. It was the best one so far. We, like I said, third time, but this was the best. Yeah. Thank you. And I think you, your recent lineup, your lineup right now, maybe it's the tightest and best lineup I've ever seen you. Yeah. The, you know that. What's funny. Compared to how long the band's been around, they're like new guys, but they, uh, the two brothers that play guitar and bass, they've been with me 10 years. So we oh. now from touring, you kind of get to know each other better. And even if we're mad at each other, we actually play better because we're like, we take it out on the instruments. So yeah, it's, it's really cool and our drummer mic's good. So yeah, we're just, we're just enjoying playing music and especially heavy metal because it's what we grew up on. And this is, this festival is one of the best, so yeah. Yeah, it's one of the best for sure. This is what I wanted to ask next because you're, I remember your demo tape. Yeah, yeah. And sure. it reminded me a little bit of new wave British heavy metal stuff. Was this an influence for you back then? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm still a nerd record collector. So back growing up, I was always picking up like Tigers of Pantang records and Jaguar and oh, yeah. Girl School, the early stuff. And there were a lot of bands. Angel Witch, I really loved them. And, uh, I could just keep going through the list because we all have those British New Wave bands, but there was also bands like Riot from New York City. I like them a lot. Obviously, Y&T's playing right now, but I, when I was into them, I still like them, but when I was really first into them, they were called Yesterday and a Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those bands influenced us definitely. Like I, I would be lying if I said no because those bands definitely influenced us, but as it went on, then we started hearing bands like Motorhead and they made us want to go faster, you know. And, but yeah, so, but we all, we still try to combine those influences because we really love those bands and we, we kind of want to keep spreading the word, even through our music, like kids, young kids to go check out like early Saxon albums and stuff like that, like Strong Arm of the Law, you know, or even Backs to the Wall, stuff like that, you know. But yeah, so those bands are big influences still to this day, yeah. And there was this cool picture on your EP, Hate, Fear and Power, where, we are, where you are in front of all these records. But, but, what, where was it? Was it a record store? It was a record store called Private Eye Records. Uh, it was similar to a lot of the early 80s record stores where you could go there and buy like Sounds magazine. Oh, and, oh yeah. Yeah where, I, yeah, where I learned, <laughs> that's where I read all the little, little small print to learn yeah. about buying demos and yeah. You know, even new bands that were like back then for me, like Snow White and oh, yeah. E Trope and Trouble. Oh. Yeah, those. The, how I found out about a lot of those bands was either fanzines yeah. or or magazines like Kerrang, because they had little little write-ups on them. So, but I'm still the same. Like to this day, I still buy. I think the last vinyl record I bought, I bought an Italian version of the uh, Fire Down Under, the Riot oh. album. So I'm still into that. Like for me, I when I go out shopping at record stores, I'm still looking for 80s metal. Yeah my favorite stuff you know and the funny thing is that you are known as a thrash or speed band but i saw you today again and i think there's a lot of typical classic heavy metal we love that in stuff. your style even you play thrash metal yeah 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 I, we try to combine it uh, how can you not like have respect for all that stuff that started us out even bands like thin lizzy yeah. you know they're still an influence but at the same time we like to play thrash but you're gonna hear those influences in there the classical heavy metal or British new wave of metal always because that's we don't want to change like we don't we're not going to go new metal that's no, not going to be our thing it, it would be horrible well I, I don't listen to that stuff anyways like when people talk about those bands I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about because I don't I don't I've never heard most of those bands and if I have I wouldn't know it because yeah. to me it sounds like shit yeah. so I'm always going to be listening to what I've been listening to for the last 
40 years of my life. Old school metal, you know, no matter what happens. But whatever, Raging Violence was one of the most shocking records when I was a teenager because I didn't understand it first. I thought, okay, the drummer plays maybe faster than the guitar player and the yeah. bass player. <laughs> Yeah. Were you, did, were you on drugs well, back then? Probably what? a little bit. Uh, I was mostly myself because I've always been a big alcohol person. I was definitely drinking a lot. But not but today. Not today. Well, <laughs> thing is, we did uh, two shows in the last couple of days where yeah, we did yeah. nine hour drives. So we're oh, trying to yeah, yeah. hydrate because we're in these we're in these vans that don't have the best air conditioning. So you're just sweating. No, we are not in America yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we're trying to get watered up, but I will be drinking a lot more later on, so try not to film me then, because it's going to be pretty funny. Oh, that's a good idea to do that later. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, all the old songs like Destroy, you play Destroy today, it sounds so much Thank more you. tight these Thank days. You, yeah. Uh, well, and Can I tell you why? Yeah. Because we realized we were playing a little too uh, sloppy in the early days. Yeah. Uh, not that I, I, I'm still proud of those records, but you know, as I you get it. as you get older, like I'm sure you even hear other bands they play yeah. they play a little tighter because they were so young back then. They weren't concerned with notes and drum beats being on time. We were yeah. just more concerned about playing fast. <laughs> so now we're concerned with not just the speed, but also having the notes line up with the drum yeah. parts. You know, because if they're not tight, it just doesn't sound good. You know. So this is why I think Hate, Fear and Power was even more powerful with the guy from DRI on drums. Yeah. He was playing pretty primitive, but... Straight head, straight fast. Ahead, yeah. yeah. Well, the thing was, when we got to that record, we, we learned from the first album, like, come on, we got to play more cohesively. The band's yeah. got to mesh better. So yeah. by that record, we had figured out, start lining up the music better, you know, a little bit more intricate stuff but not too much i mean obviously now we progress more because we're yeah, older yeah. and as you get older you know even your earliest influences whether it be sabbath or deep purple oh, those yeah. they sneak yeah, in yeah. there because me i'm a huge richie blackmore fan so yeah. as we go i'm sure we're going to probably do a little bit more like melodic stuff as well because to me that stuff is beautiful you know so but i like to mix it up just because to me music's like food Like some days when I'm at home, I want to put on a Sabbath record. Some days I want to put on a Motorhead record, you know what I mean? So I like to combine it, but I think people kind of know that we have a certain signature at the same time, you know, so, yeah. And because of your, yeah, sometimes you scream, but sometimes it's melodic yeah, vocals yeah, yeah. you are doing. Yeah. And it, I think you were one of the first doing melodic vocals on Thrashman. Yeah, people were kind of tripped out about it in the beginning. They didn't know what to think. It was weird back Then, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty shocking. But you know what it was? We just wanted to. Also, we were in Los Angeles yeah. where there was so much hair metal, oh. and we hated that shit at the time. You know, like because there was so much of it. Like no matter where you would turn, there'd be either like a Motley Crue-looking band, or yeah, yeah. you know, or a Striper-looking band. You know, not that I hate those bands, but it just wasn't my thing. So we wanted to go against the grain by doing more aggressive music, yeah. just because we were kind of pissed that all these bands could play these clubs that we couldn't play. But finally, once we played enough, we got big enough, those clubs started letting us in to play because yeah. we were drawing people. But yeah, it was just really because we wanted to go against the grain. But yeah. punk and hardcore also was a point for you. Back yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or still today, still is, I yeah. I yeah. mean, to me, it's, uh, I don't know, whether I listen to Motorhead or GBH or some shit like that, yeah. to me, I don't really see a huge difference. I mean, there is a difference, but I, know, yeah. I like the aggressiveness of it, so we kind of, combine that in there too because we wanted to make the songs more driven you know yeah. and also we just were kids wanting to experiment a little bit I, I always thought why try to be like somebody else try to at yeah. least be yourself because some bands they just try to sound so much like everybody like I said we got influences but we're still being ourselves yeah. you know it's important back then it was something special that you have punks skinheads yeah, was, metalheads on concert now you play in 2015 bang you had you have dads with yeah. their kids <laughs> Mm -hmm. You have totally different people. Did you expect back in the days that heavy metal would progress like this? No. I mean, we hoped because I've always been open-minded. Like, I went to school with guys that had mohawks and guys that had really long hair. Yeah. So to me, I didn't give a shit as long as you were cool. Yeah, uh, I didn't yeah. care what your hairstyle looked like. So uh, I'm happy now that it has happened. But in the beginning, it was violent. There were people fighting each other, punks, meddlers. They hated each other. Yeah. So now when I see these shows and everybody's getting along, I go, I remember when they didn't get along. Yeah. You know, and I think it was a little bit of ignorance, people not knowing, yeah. you know, but now it's it's become a, a really blended thing. It's all blended. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I went to, 
a long time ago, I went to a Black Sabbath show, and they were... It was like a reunion show, the first reunion, actually. Yeah. And I couldn't believe the diversity in the fans. Like like you said, little kids with their dads and yeah. sisters and brothers and moms, like whole family. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's basically going to a family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> but it's nice to see because I think it's something that we all help build, yeah. whether it be punk or metal or, you know, thrash. We brought it all together. Yeah. And now you can have festivals like this where there's a metal band, a thrash band, a traditional metal band, a band like Y&T. So I love it. I think it's the best thing ever. I wish I wish America would wake up and do festivals like this because yeah. rare, rare. Have you, have you played Maryland Deathfest? It's amazing you just asked that. We just, we just got added to it with, uh, yeah, this year it's going to be Venom, Testament, Hyrax, Nuclear assault. It's gonna be insane. Yeah, yeah. The Maryland Death Fest. This is probably the best one they've ever had, but it's yeah. the only thing close to European festivals that we have. That's true. It's the and only one. There's a guy from in uh, in Ohio trying to do Warriors of Metal, and he really has a hard time because he he books all the cool bands, floods them and jets them and stuff, but he only gets 100. Yeah, people. yeah. Well, the problem is, is people in America need to get off their ass if they really do love the music yeah. and go to these shows in Europe. People travel from fucking every country to a festival like this. Yeah, yeah. So in America, we're not that big, really, if you think about it. So if you're in New York, you can fly yeah. or California, make plans. Yeah. Hopefully we can change people's thinking. Yeah. So they'll start doing like here in Europe. Like we played here today. There's kids from Russia, yeah. Greece, France, wherever. They're from all over the place. You know, uh, the Ukraine. And for us, that's that makes us feel good that we've been able to bring people together from yeah. all these different countries. I just ran into a couple that's here from Australia, and they said oh. the reason they came, they read the list, and they couldn't believe we were on the list. So it, it makes us feel good that people will fly from Australia to see us here in Germany. But we just need to change America to where people start traveling to these yeah. festivals, or the festivals will they'll just die, you know. And the guy from Switzerland made your logo, or? Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tom G. Warrior. Uh, back in those days, uh, we were all pen pals, as you probably yeah, were one yeah. of those guys, too. So I used to write the Tom G. Warrior, and I, when I sent him our first demo, he goes, can I make a new logo? I think you're, and he was really honest with me. He goes, I think your logo shit. And I said, okay, because I drew the first logo, and it was shit, because I'm not, I'm not an artist, you know? But uh, he sent me this logo, And we've been using it ever since. Yeah. yeah. And, and it looks cool. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> yeah. what's funny, when he drew it, he drew it at the same time he did the Celtic Frost logo. So yeah. if you look at that logo, there are similarities. Definitely. But I still, every once in a while, I still see him, and he, we still get along great. I always hear these funny stories about him, but he's, to me, I, he's like the nicest guy I've ever he met. Is. So Definitely. So when I hear people say stuff about him, I'm like, you don't, you obviously don't know him because he's a really nice guy. So if But Tom it's, does it's cool see this- cool that there are stories about him because so he gets interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah true, true. He's a nice guy, definitely. But I, I, I think he's that. one of the most talented metal musicians yeah. I've ever known. Very creative, yeah. You told 10,000 people today there will be a new high rec CD very, very soon. Yeah, we have to. You already have written it? Well, there's four songs. I mean, we got a ways to go, but yeah. it also is a way of motivating my guitar player, who's a pain in the ass. <laughs> So to get him to come to my house and work, because we did the last album in my, at my house, I'm like, you gotta, I gotta do something like this on stage to force him to start writing more songs. But, ah, okay. Yeah, we're gonna get something together. We should be back with the new album, and then there'll be a tour in March, yeah. April through Europe again. So, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we have to. We have to come and work. And we you have, have a record company from Germany. I think your boss is sitting there somewhere. Yeah, he's over there probably getting drunk. I don't know. So when he's drunk, you can go to his purse and get some money out. Take some money out, <laughs> yeah. That would be nice towards the recording. But yeah, uh, he, he actually is like, you guys need another record. Just, yeah. You got to keep working. Like this year we did two European tours on this new record, Immortal Legacy, that SPV put out. And they've been doing a good job with it. I'm, I'm really happy with them. They kick us in the ass. They keep saying you got to do more shit, yeah. which is that's what a record label's supposed to do, motivate yeah. you. So for right now, I couldn't be happier. We just got to keep working. Yeah. yeah. I thank you for this interview. Thank you. Let me tell you right now, for supporting metal for fucking many years. I, I, you know, I love us, us who have been around a long time. Though you two, you guys have been supporting music for a long time. So thank you. Thanks for supporting metal. We have fans. I'm a fan too. No matter what, yeah, well, no matter what we do, we are still be fans. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Cool. That's perfect. So, whose beer is that? It's been open.